Have you ever been recording a YouTube segment where you were reviewing a movie and your camera all of a sudden starts saying data error and won't let you record anymore? That's what just happened to me with my Geek and Dorks review for The Martian. Apparently my camera wasn't agreeing with my excellent analysis and review of the film, so it decided to quit. But I did run out and pick up a brand new camera. I think if the viewfinder is any indicator, the footage is going to look a bit, a bit different. Um, just to let everyone know, this was my good old friend, the Sony Handycam CX-110 here. Um, we've been through a lot together. Basically everything you've seen on my channel except for the Showstopper show has been shot literally on this one camera. So it kind of bummed me out when uh, I figured out that her time was up, but happens to all of us, right? Um, and I'm excited to see what this new camera offers. Now one of the cool things about this new camera is it actually has a microphone jack in it. So I'm not going to do it um, for this video because I want to make sure to get these videos done and posted in time for all of you, my lovely audience. But I do have a lapel mic here so you might see this start popping up probably on Brain Scratch this week um, and hopefully that's going to sweeten the audio even a little bit more than it has been. Um, traditionally I've just been using the uh, built-in microphone that was on this camera. It does have a wind cover that I've added to it and I do some audio sweetening in post-production on it for all of you but um, I think this lapel mic is going to give us some better production. So anyway, not to get derailed from the focus here, I do want to tell you about The Martian. Now I went and saw this today specifically so I could review it for all, you, all of you guys. Um, I actually had one of my commenters, Rick L. Big shout out to Rick. He's uh, been a been around a long time. He's been a fan for a while. Um, and he threatened to pull my geek card if I didn't go see The Martian. So, Rick, I went out and saw it, and we may have differing opinions on it. Let me just put that out there. But let's start with the good, shall we? Um, first of all, it's about essentially about an exploration trip to Mars, which um, if you look at the NASA news that came out last week, that's a big current subject. I think they know that the public um, is interested in seeing us explore space more, and Mars seems like the next likely destination where we can do some serious exploration. That's why we've got uh, a few rovers that have been sent out there. We've got a satellite orbiting it now. Um, of course, that news that was released last week about yet another indicator of some type of water being found there. Um, but that's where this movie starts to creak for me just a little bit. I really had trouble understanding the time frame of this film. Um, the, the space suit design and the interiors of the uh, habitat that they were living on in Mars and the spaceships and everything, they seem a little postmodern, especially the suits. They seemed kind of futuristic, honestly, compared to what we've seen NASA use in the past. Um, and there's that thing that keeps tickling in the back of my head that the, the form of NASA that they were showing us in this film, I don't think that exists anymore. This film also almost feels like it's paying homage to what NASA used to be when there was a lot more space exploration going on in the 80s, um, I think in, er, into the early 90s a little bit. Um, but now NASA, at least from my perspective, is transformed into more of a scientific data collection uh, entity. and there's a little bit of a believability factor where I'm not sure that we will be sending humans um, to Mars necessarily. I think they're going to do a lot more with um, you know drones essentially being sent out there and they might integrate that with virtual reality um, here on Earth so that we can get a much closer look but quite honestly the way that they depict it in this movie feels a little old. As a matter of fact the first 20-30 minutes of the film they literally feel like those old sci-fi movies that were made in the 50s and 60s before actual space exploration happened. There's a lot of jargon that is pretty watered down, kind of dumbed down for the audience. Of course, you've got tons of scenes in the control room, including the, oh, yeah, everyone cheers in the control room, which happens a few too many times in this movie. Um, as a matter of fact, this movie feels like a lot of cliches from the same type of movie that you've seen before, all stacked together. Um, but, see, I digressed. I was trying to start with the good. Here's the good. 
there is a very full cast of stars that you will recognize. For example, Matt Damon plays the lead. He is Mark Watney, and he's playing a role that is uh, it definitely made me remember his role in Interstellar, where he basically kind of played the same character, a guy that went on an exploration and was left on a planet on his own. I have to say that the Interstellar character is probably more interesting dramatically than this Mark Watley character. You never find out anything about this guy that really associates to his family, except a little bit later in the movie they mention that he has parents, which I think we could have all assumed. Um, but there is nothing that really draws his character into a dramatic narrative that really touches you outside of the fact that he's been abandoned. Um, Jessica Chastain is in it. Kristen Wiig is in it in kind of an odd role for her. Um, we all know her, of course, from Saturday Night Live. Of course, she's going to be in the new Ghostbusters that's coming out soon, the new all-female uh, Ghostbusters, which apparently now is having cameos by all of the still-surviving cast from the original Ghostbusters, which I think should be kind of cool. But in this film, she plays this kind of NASA corporate type, and it's strange because I know Kristen Wiig has some serious dramatic chops. I watched a film of hers called uh, The Skeleton Twins, where she really dug deep and hit some good dramatic moments. But this script really doesn't give her um, any chance to do that dramatically, and it really doesn't give her, it gives her a little bit of comedy, which is something I'll get to a little bit later when I start hitting the real negatives of this script. Um, but not anything serious where you're like, oh, that's Kristen Wiig doing what Kristen Wiig does. As a matter of fact, her character probably could have been completely written out of the script and he probably wouldn't have even noticed it. So it's kind of strange to see her, I consider her a, a pretty big star nowadays, and it's kind of strange for me to see her in this type of movie, in that type of role, and being what felt like underutilized. Like they really didn't know what to do with her, they just wanted Kristen Wiig. Um, Jeff Daniels is in this and I... I'm a bit of a fan of Jeff Daniels. I mean, he's that kind of friendly face we all know and love. I loved him in Speed. Um, of course, he was great in the first Dumb and Dumber. I actually never saw the second one, or I guess it would be the third, but we don't count that other one that didn't have the main real actors in it. Um, but there's something about his performance in this movie. He plays the head of NASA. The character's name is Teddy Sanders, and it's just very... We've seen this character before. It's It's dry. It's just, it's not engaging. It doesn't feel like a real person. It feels like an actor trying to play an authority figure like the president. As a matter of fact, if you cast Jeff Daniels as the president, I'm pretty sure he'd give you this exact same performance in that role. Um, it's really not compelling. And once again, I don't know if it's the script not really fleshing out those characters enough or giving them opportunities to show dramatic chops or the directing, not pulling those types of performances out. There's just, there's something really missing from a lot of the characters in this movie. But I'm trying to be positive, really. Um, Michael Pena, kind of cool to see him pop up in this. Uh, Sean Bean is in this. Kate Mara is in this. And Sebastian Stan is in this. And let me just say, I'm not very familiar with Kate Mara's work. I know she's emanated, or she's been nominated for an Emmy. Um, but I've been subjected, and I, I do say subjected, to two performances of her this year. The first was in Fantastic Four, and now this. Apparently, she still hasn't even watched her performance in Fantastic Four, and I hear that she was not easy um, on the director on the set, that there seemed to be some weirdness there. I think he didn't want to use her in the studio, forced him to use her or something like that. Um, I gotta be honest, the performance that she gives in this movie, completely forgettable, and I'm beginning to wonder why the hell people are casting her in these roles. Um, she plays kind of like the IT geek of the of the squad, um, and it just she doesn't give it anything interesting to me. Outside of, yes, she's a pretty young woman. She's visually appealing for a lot of the audience, but there are no dramatic layers. There are no comedic layers. It is quite honestly a very flat performance. Not quite as flat as her performance in the Fantastic Four, which I will just call out as saying was horrible. Um, but in this movie, it's not much better. And once again, that character could have been written out of the script. You would have never missed her. Um, so it's strange for me because you see this cast is loaded with a lot of talent, but for some reason, the director, Ridley Scott, 
which I was surprised by the, by the end. I was like, okay, first of all, this movie was not based on a book. Well, actually it was. And second, this has to be an unknown director. No, it's actually Ridley Scott. But I couldn't help but feel like this whole movie was a television movie that was stuffed with these actors and then put on the big screen. The script is not written to be... I mean, obviously it was someone's intention to make it a big screen feature, but if you've watched sci-fi for the past 30 or 40 years, there is absolutely zero originality in this script. There is nothing original. As a matter of fact, it seemed like Ridley Scott was aware that the script might get too depressive if you really focused on the true drama that should be kind of sucked out of this movie. Matt Damon being abandoned. Um, I would almost liken it to Castaway like it's Castaway on Mars. That's kind of what I assumed when I was going in, but that's definitely not what I got. In terms of true dramatic performance, even out of the star, Matt Damon, you probably only got about five to 10 minutes of that, and everything else was these kind of schlocky one-liners, and quite honestly, you could easily re-edit this movie to being a comedy. There was so many schlocky one-liners followed by, um, just scenes that you've seen before that it almost seemed to be making fun of that style of film in a way. Um, there's also this very strange twist in the soundtrack where they include a ton of disco music and it seems like it's done to try to lighten the mood and that's what I, I think Ridley Scott was worried that there was a way to do this movie that would be too depressive and he was steering clear of that and I think he steered way too clear of that and took this movie into this, this could have been on the Sci-Fi Channel, seriously, if it wasn't for the cast. The, the cast, obviously, the names are too big, but you swap out a few of those people with former stars of 90210, and uh, all of a sudden you have a perfect Sci-Fi movie. Um, there was just something about the believability in it that didn't work for me, and not just outside of the NASA stuff. The science in it is not as smart as, for example, the science in Interstellar, and that's kind of what I left with. I was driving home and I was like, okay, if I had the choice right now and I was forced to, but I had to watch either The Martian or Interstellar, which one would it be? And without, without a blip of a thought, it would be Interstellar. Um, and I'm sure many of you saw my review of it. There was, I really had problems with the ending of Interstellar, but there was a lot of very smart science in it, very interesting thoughts and stuff that I had not seen before. And in terms of that, The Martian falls completely flat. It is largely unoriginal. Um, so that's the good, that's the bad. And here's the geeky. They do this weird thing in terms of trying to, so, to show the scientists that work at NASA and have them have this kind of cavalier attitude where everyone's joking with each other all the time. And you get those lines that sounded like they were lifted out of old Star Trek scripts where, hey, we're contacting JPL, we need them to build a rocket for us. Yeah, but that's going to take 58 days. Well, we're going to give them 30. I mean, just seriously, there was, there was two points where, and this is a good indicator for me when I'm watching a movie, where my eyes rolled. And if I feel my eyes roll, I'm like, uh-oh, I know that that's, I got to take note of that. There's something wrong with this movie. Um, they tried to show um, s these kind of nerdy scientists in a more hip fashion, but they still played to, hey, watch this stupid nerd be a stupid nerd. Like there's one scene in particular, and this doesn't give away anything about the, the main plot, but um, they woke up the stupid nerd that was sleeping in his office and he took his coffee and poured it out in his trash can, but his trash can was made of wire mesh, so the coffee just spilled out all over the place. Because he's a really stupid nerd, but he also happens to be a genius when it comes to figuring out uh, math equations for the trajectory of these rockets. So it just hit all these indicators that they were relying on writing devices that have been used time and time again, stereotypes that have been used time and time again, and ultimately the best thing I can leave you with was I did not feel like this movie had an ounce of originality in it. It had mediocre performances from what should be a stellar cast, and when I took a look at Ridley Scott's work, he has some great work that he's done. I mean, this is, you know, Blade Runner, this is uh, Alien. I mean, this guy has had his hands in seriously large projects that are 
ultimately, I mean, just hugely popular and a part of our modern culture. But if you look at his recent work, not so much. And as a matter of fact, there's a ton of television work going on there, and I'm starting to feel like his directing style has pulled itself towards uh, more of a tele, like a television director than a true spectacle film director. Because this movie definitely didn't have any spectacle or good drama. Um, I'll leave you by saying that The Martian makes Interstellar look like Interstellar was written by William Shakespeare in terms of dramatic structure. Um, there is just no seriously good drama to be had, and this wacky, almost like an 80s comedy in a weird way, almost like something like Caddyshack, this wacky, goofy joke vibe that they try to keep pegging at you, and it really comes very often. Um, it really, at least every five minutes, there's some kind of quip or joke, and some of the audience reacted to it, honestly. Um, this is one of the larger audiences that I've been to. You know, I go watch these movies in the middle of the day. There's not a whole lot of people typically there. There was probably 150 people there. And when the film ended, there was this weird thing where, like, three people clapped in the front, and then they, the credits had some scenes that were going on, so that kind of died down, and people watched the scenes until those stopped, and then the credit roll started. And then maybe 15, 20 other people clapped, but only for a few seconds and left. And as people were leaving the theater, I didn't hear people talking about, oh, did you see that scene? Oh, can you believe that performance? Oh, nothing. Everyone just had this kind of dull expression on their face as they left the theater. And that's kind of how I felt inside. Now, I can tell you, I don't think everyone's going to agree with me about this. Um, this movie did $55 million on its opening weekend. That is great for October. I think it came in um, number two for highest openings in October. And on IMDb right now, it's rated an 8.5 out of 10. Now I can tell you, for me, this is a 4. 4 out of 10. I will likely never see this film again, probably won't think about it after tomorrow, and I seriously doubt when people look back at the history and scope of Ridley Scott's work that anyone is going to say, oh, remember that great movie he did, The Martian? Um, this is something that feels like it was churned out almost like a NASA propaganda piece, um, which people kind of accused Interstellar of being a little bit uh, when, when they commented on that review video of mine. Um, but this even feels more so, like the whole movie feels like a, a NASA propaganda piece. Um, so that's it. Uh, for those of you that went and saw it, maybe you guys enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. I still want to hear from you about what you liked about it. Um, there's definitely different things, I think, that I look for in films. and. You know, performance is a huge one, dramatic structure is a huge one, originality is a huge one. And when it came to those things, I just felt like it fell flat and it really left me kind of wanting more. Is it entertaining? To a degree, yeah. I, I think there is a certain amount of entertainment, and that's why I gave it a 4 out of 10. It's not a complete waste of time, but this is not the type of film that is going to resonate with people for years and that people are going to say it, it changed their life. I, I really doubt we're going to hear kids in the future say, oh, I always wanted to become an astronaut ever since I saw that movie The Martian. No, I, I really don't foresee any of that happening, but I could be wrong. Maybe you've got a kid that's already said that. If so, drop it in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this Geek and Dorks review on the new camera. I'm still going to be learning some things about this. I hope it looks okay and sounds okay. We'll find out. And I hope you have a great week. See you on Friday with another Brain Scratch. Take care.